Good morning everybody, or welcome to my vlog. So, batteries, batteries, batteries. Massive stationary batteries are popping up all over the place. And there's a good reason for that. Renewable energy doesn't always generate power when you want it. And the ability to move that energy that you've generated from when it's being generated to when it's being needed is essential. A lot of people don't know this about the grid, but fundamentally you have to match exactly the energy that's generated with the energy that's being used. If you don't make enough, the voltage will drop. If you make too much, the voltage will go up. It's, you know, one of the things that National Grid has to constantly do. Balance what's being generated with what's being used. And the problem with that, of course, is that renewable energy tends to be generated when it feels like it, and not at other times. It's not a particularly bright day today. So the ability to actually store some of that excess power and release it when you need it is basically essential. And what's been happening in the past, and what tends to happen, still actually the extra energy that's required at any given point in time tends to be generated by the dirtiest kind of energy generation that you can think of whether it's coal or gas usually gas to be honest or oil emergency power stations fire up as everyone puts their kettle on at the sort of half time of the world cup that kind of thing batteries would be a very very good way to eliminate some of the dirtiest power that we actually generate. The problem with these large battery energy storage systems is that often they run into complications, shall we say, when it comes to planning and the locals and the local you know, communities accepting the siting of these storage areas. Quite often they end up being on uh, greenfield sites as opposed to brownfield sites which is a bit of an issue and one of the problems there of course is when you have a large energy storage system like this it obviously needs to be connected to the grid in a satisfactory way so that does limit where they can be placed you also get people who question the environmental impact of such things. I mean, huge amounts of batteries that require huge amounts of resources, some of which can be quite damaging to actually dig out of the ground, like lithium, for example. When it comes to the actual environmental credentials of these batteries, I personally feel that it is a little bit of a... It's better to do something. We know that what we're doing at the moment is a complete dead end. We just can't keep doing it forever, obviously. We couldn't keep doing it forever even if there was no environmental impact from releasing uh, greenhouse gases into the atmosphere, or even if we found a way to capture all of those greenhouse gases and shove them back underground, it wouldn't matter. We'd still run out of oil eventually. So it isn't a, it isn't a permanent solution to just keep on trucking like it's a totally sustainable thing when it isn't a, sus a sustainable thing but renewables which i think really should be re you know they, they should be um what's the word remarketed as infinite power it's not renewable energy it's infinite energy because that is actually the case although technically the sun isn't infinite from a functional point of view it might as well be I mean, it is going to work and continue to output the same or greater energy as it currently does for hundreds of millions of years. So yeah, functionally infinite. I, I, def I think that's, you know, a better way to market it than renewable. Because it's not really renewable, is it? It's not like you use up all the wind, but don't worry, it'll grow back over the next couple of days, you know, it's just always there or not, depending on the weather. So anyway, there can be substantial barriers to actually putting these systems in place. I mean, I think actually even the whole greenfields thing, it's not really the issue that some people make it out to be. I mean, these tend to be boxes sited on slabs of concrete with, you know, grass around them. There's you know, when it comes to harming the environment, it's not exactly a coal-fired power station. It doesn't even look as ugly as a lot of things. It's not as ugly as, say, a giant warehouse or whatever, because it's it, it doesn't stand above the ground that high, most of these things. You know, they barely come above the hedgerow quite often, especially if you sight them in a sort of a field a little bit away. I, I don't know. It, 
it wouldn't bother me if they wanted to put one, you know, at the bottom of the hill from my village, then great. It'd be our way to do, a, do our bit. One thing is for sure though, there is a lot of interest from businesses in putting these facilities in. I think there's something like over a thousand applications currently in the works, according to a, a government database, which is a lot. Even for a country of 60 million people, it's a lot. I mean, if each one could power 60,000 houses for two hours, then you'd have two hours worth of power for most of the country. I also think that one of the things that actually could make a massive difference from the point of view of grid storage and leveling out that renewable energy peaks and troughs is to mandate that every new build house has to have a battery storage of a certain capacity. I think that would be a fantastic idea. I don't know why the government doesn't do that. How does this cost a fortune anyway? And you can help the actual customers to enjoy the benefits of that by making sure that you know they can use those batteries to store energy at night and use it during the day, leading to cheaper bills, potentially. I think that that seems like something that is an absolute no-brainer. More or less everyone who has a mortgage could afford to pay another few quid in mortgage, or they can't afford their mortgage. This is like the two options. So I think that's a great idea. And there's a lot of houses in this country, and a lot of you know newish houses that go in. You would very quickly end up with a gargantuan amount of battery storage if every new house had them. Ultimately, it would be great if every house had battery storage. It would also be great if every house had solar panels on the roof. And if you combine that with the battery storage, you really would be taking out a double digit percentage of the country's energy requirements in one fell swoop. But that's not what we're talking about here. In this case, we are specifically talking about these large systems which are being put in for tens if not hundreds of millions of pounds worth of investment. But I think they're a good idea and I hope that more of them do come to fruition. You do get fires with them, that is one of the things that people say can be a concern, but there aren't that many fires. The US government has tallied up that there have been something like 63 store, uh, fires at these battery storage systems globally since 2011. That isn't that many really, especially when you consider that some of these countries are very hot and have less stringent safety regulations, but it is a new technology, comparatively speaking. So, and also in terms of helping the actual environmental credentials of these stationary storage systems, they don't have to use brand new batteries. They can use second life car batteries and we're getting more and more electric cars. So there will be more and more electric car batteries that need to have something done with them. If you use them as stationary storage, once their life as mobile storage is done, then it gives you an ability to push the problem of having to be able to recycle them a little bit further down the line, which is no bad thing because actually recycling on mass lithium ion batteries is a tough challenge. And it is something that is gonna take a while for industry to solve how to how to do that in a practical and efficient way but i'm confident that we will get there if we use the technology we will solve the problems with it that is usually how it works at least as far as the laws of physics will allow anyway i hope you found this video interesting and fun if you have remember to leave a like and share it and subscribe if you haven't already and i'll see you all in the next episode of my vlog bye